How's it going, everybody? Raphael from Share Studio here. Um, I'm the founder of Share Studio. In the background, we got Pichu and Ellie. You've seen them in previous posts. Um, say hi, girls. They're going to be in the background. They're going to be doing all the technical director work. All right, I'm going to remove you girls from here. And today we have Nathan Hirsch. Uh, Nathan, um, tell us in, you know, very quickly why should viewers pay attention to this podcast? Yeah, I mean, there, there's two unsexy parts of entrepreneurship and, and selling that, that I like to focus on, and that's hiring and finances. And to me, you can have the, the best product in the world. You could be a good decision maker, a good entrepreneur, no Amazon. But if you're bad at hiring or, or you're bad at understanding financials and, and don't have a good monthly process to, to make decisions based on numbers, you're going to struggle. And I mean, I have a, a lot of experience in the space. I've sold 25 million on Amazon. I, I built a hiring marketplace called free up that we exited and we had grown that to eight figures by, by the time we exited and now i run a, a company called outsource school where we teach people our unique hiring process and a e-commerce monthly bookkeeping service called ecom balance so i'm here to kind of tell people um two parts of their business that they might not think are important but end up being a lot of times a difference between success and failure 100 100 so guys um from now on, they're not going to be called um, podcasts anymore. They're going to be master classes. The idea is to bring you as much value as we can. We ask you nothing in return, but just for you guys to ask questions and actually learn something from this. Um, and obviously, you know, subscribe if you can. That's the only motivation we have at Share Studios, just you guys, you know, interact with you guys more and see how we can help each other. Because remember, one hand washes the other hand and they both wash the face. And this is a very tight, tight community, I would say. Um, everybody knows everybody in some way we all go to the same trade shows so you know like the idea is to help our community and just keep growing um Nathan, bookkeeping bookkeeping it is essential for business right uh, extremely important for our business extremely extremely important and tell, tell us about bookkeeping for, for amazon sellers like i feel like a lot of amazon sellers as you know uh, they're doing this uh, more statistics show that they're doing this as a side gig thing to get out of the nine to five, right? Um, and I guess a lot of them maybe don't know, really know how to approach this in terms of bookkeeping. How, how what should they do? You, you guys, if you don't know about Nathan, he didn't say it. Like he, he also he said that he sold more than twenty five million. He also exited the company. Uh, he made I think he grew from five thousand dollars investment to twelve million dollars. Uh, if I'm not uh, misquoting, um, so Nathan has experience. Let's hear from Nathan. Nathan, bookkeeping, just give us all the information. What should we do? Yeah, so I think the starting point is the mentality that there, there's no situation where you should be doing your own bookkeeping. You shouldn't be doing your own bookkeeping for two reasons. One, it's not a good use of your time. Any time that you spend on bookkeeping is time you could be spent on marketing, sales, expansion, things that actually grow your business. And second of all, most entrepreneurs are just not good at bookkeeping. And any time that you spend doing it is going to be time that, or it's going to be have to get redone anyway. And cleaning up books is way more expensive than just doing it right from day one. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that you need to use my bookkeeping service. Like our monthly minimum is 250 a month. So maybe you want to find a cheaper bookkeeping service out there, but you shouldn't be doing it yourself. It's not a good use of your time. You shouldn't be hiring someone and teaching them bookkeeping, especially if you don't know it. Like the mentality of hiring a VA and teaching them to be your bookkeeper is crazy. That's not how you approach it. Hire someone who knows e-commerce, knows bookkeeping. And the goal is to create a good monthly process where the month ends, by the 10th of the 15th, every single month on time, no excuses, you get an income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow. And you have a meeting on your calendar every single month where you go through those reports with your business partner, your team leader, your bookkeeper, whoever it is. And that's the meeting where you make decisions every single month. And it should be in your calendar, not missed. If you go to econbalance.com, you can grab our, our finance agenda, which is the exact monthly agenda that Connor, my business partner, and I have gone through for, for six years, every month for the past six years. And that's where you should go through. You shouldn't be making decisions based on gut or based on the money going to your bank account. You need to get those reports every single month. The other thing that I'll say is there's really two softwares you should be using, either QuickBooks Online or Xero. Um, QuickBooks Desktop, we live in 2022. Unless you actually have someone coming to your office to do bookkeeping, that's not a real option. And yes, there's free bookkeeping tools out there, 
but they're free for a reason. They're only going to be good for so long and it's going to be a complete pain to, to move them over down the line. And you want to avoid companies like Bench where you're using their software because down the line, if you want to switch or you outgrow them and they even say that they're not really for businesses over a million dollars, all your stuff is in their software and they're the only people that use that software. So make sure you're using either QuickBooks or Xero. Make sure you have ownership of your account. Your CPA shouldn't be the owner of your QuickBooks account. Your bookkeeper shouldn't be the owner of your QuickBooks account. That's a, a horror story waiting to happen. Um, I was talking to a client yesterday where he, his bookkeeper just disappeared off the face of the earth and you want to have ownership when that happens. So the, the other piece is a, a company called A2X, where if you're selling on Amazon, you're selling on different marketplaces, you need that connection tool. Amazon connecting directly to QuickBooks does not work very well, makes it very tough to reconcile. Um, so make sure that you are using a connection tool. There's some other ones like Link My Books and Connect My Books um, that connect right to the marketplaces, Amazon, Shopify, Walmart, pull in data, help you get accurate numbers. And, and that's kind of the, the absolute basics of what you should expect. You shouldn't do your own bookkeeping. You should have a monthly process where on the first of the month, the month ends. Um, and then by the 15th, you get income statement, balance sheet, cash flow, and you should be using either QuickBooks Online or Xero and have ownership of those softwares. Yeah, so really quick uh, backstory. Um, when I started, I, I've been a filmmaker since 2009 and I've been a marketer since 2012. Um, so entrepreneurship for me was, um, I guess, the road I wanted to lead onto, um, but um, I didn't have any formal accounting um, training. You know, like uh, numbers for me were like kind of like, ah, like what should I do? So when I when I like, started my well, studio, um, fully legal, I was, I'll be honest, I was one of those dudes who like took uh, some courses uh, for QuickBooks, paid twenty five bucks a month uh, for the membership, and just did it myself, and. <laughs> <laughs> that was the worst thing I could have done ever, I swear to God. Um, but it taught me a lot. It taught me like, uh, what should I not do? What should I do? So if I had to do it again, I would probably get um, somebody who knows what I'm doing, uh, who knows what the person is doing. Um, you know, um, Nathan's company, or if you have another company, go with that company, whatever feels comfortable. But what I would say is get somebody special. That's my personal opinion. Get somebody specialized in your industry, in your niche. Uh, for example, uh, right here, uh, I was looking for Nathan's and um, he specializes in e-commerce. Um, so if we go to the website, let me just pull it up really quick, guys, so you can check it out. Right here, as you can see, um, it says that he's working with all the e-commerce platforms. Uh, Nathan, why do you think it's so important for sellers to niche down to somebody who really understands e-commerce and not just a general bookkeeper that's doing real estate this or this or that or, or should they do it like what's your take on that yeah i mean e-commerce bookkeeping tends to be some of the most complicated bookkeeping um, we're actually spinning out a second brand called accounts balance for non-e-commerce businesses like agencies software whatever but e-commerce bookkeeping is very unique i mean two quick things and or three quick things and there's a lot of them but like a lot of people, a lot of bookkeepers that don't know e-commerce, they'll take the net that's put into your bank account and put that as a top line on your income statement when really that's not how it works. You have Amazon sales, you've got different fees, you've got refunds, and that can really affect uh, your taxes and just your overall numbers, especially if you ever want to sell your business. The next factor is cost of goods sold and inventory. There are certain ways that you need to record that and you want someone who has dealt with inventory before. Bookkeepers that have never done that um, are, are going to struggle. And lastly, you want it in a cruel basis. A lot of agencies and other companies can get by with cash basis accounting. Usually econ businesses can, unless they're very small. So. And Joe Valley from Quiet Light um, talks about it a lot in his book. Like if you want to actually be able to make decisions every single month for your e-commerce business, you need a cruel bookkeeping. And if you ever want to sell your business and get a high multiple, you need a cruel bookkeeping. Now, cash bookkeeping, think about it like this. If you bought $50,000 worth of inventory in January, January might not look that great because you got $50,000 in there. Um, and then February, March, April might look great, but that doesn't tell you anything because you don't really know how profitable you are. If you use accrual, you will average out that $50,000 purchase over the months that you actually use the inventory. And it's, it gives you a lot more accuracy on what you're actually making. So the other side of it is just segmentation because 
You might be selling different brands. You might be on different marketplaces. You want to know your margins for every marketplace and every brand. There's a lot of sellers out there that are selling five products, but they're only profitable on one of them. And they don't know that because everything's just put together and they're just seeing bulk numbers. So these are just a few things to keep in mind when you go to find a bookkeeper. You definitely want someone in that knows e-commerce if you're in the e-commerce space. Question. Uh, I, I keep muting myself on and off because I'm, a, I'm in a we work space right now. Uh, you know, entrepreneurs so always going to go. Uh, I love your background, by the way. It seems really cool. Um, <laughs> for me, as an entrepreneur, um, it's super important to to have a connection with the people who I, I'm working with, right? Um, that's just me personally. Maybe a lot of them also have that need, need that you know to understand who they're dealing with. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the, you know, why, why go into this? Like you already were making so much, you know, money on, on Amazon. Why, why do this? Like, is it motivational? Do you like, do you seek, you know, something from it? Do you want to help people? Do you, what were you, when you were selling all that and you started, you're like, oh my God, this is crazy. People really need help with this. If not, like this is a make it or break a situation for a lot of businesses. Imagine Uncle Sam comes in and he's like, Yo, you owe a bunch of money. And you're like, what? I don't know what to do. You know, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, so I started selling on Amazon back in 2008. So I had to be one of the first 1,000 Amazon sellers. And it was fun. It was exciting. I went from selling books to, to drop shipping baby products and toys. And at the beginning, we thought we were going to take down Amazon. And we got to the point where we were doing $6, 7000000 million a year. And I mean, it got harder. There were different coaches, consultants that came out. Um, Amazon was changing their algorithm we were never selling our own brand. We were always drop shipping other people's brands. So as we grew this business, we, we kind of saw the writing on the wall that what worked for the first four years wasn't going to work. And we were kind of going up and down one year. We do 3 million the next year. We do two, the next year we do two and a half. And since we weren't selling our own brand and we were very dependent on Amazon, it became a, a little less fun, less motivating. And along the way, we had built up this team of really great virtual assistants and, and really great freelancers. And we, we did that because we were in college and hiring college kids proved to be pretty unreliable. So we had all these great VAs and freelancers. We didn't need them all full time. Some of them were seasonal and we started to offer them to other e-commerce sellers as we began to network and, and more and more people started selling on Amazon. Well, this became free up and free up quickly surpassed our Amazon sales. We did a million dollars in the first year, 5 million in the second, 9 million in the third. We ended up making the decision to, to shut down our Amazon business and free up was fun. I mean, it was our first time building our own website and learning SEO and having a personal brand and a real brand and doing B2B and, and networking with other entrepreneurs and helping entrepreneurs and, and all of that. And, and we, ended up exiting that in November 2019 to one of our clients, uh, the Hoth, who are great entrepreneurs. And that's a, a whole another story we can get into. But I mean, that exit was life changing. It, it allowed um, Connor, my business partner and I to have financial and personal freedom. At the same time, we didn't know that a pandemic was right around the corner. We thought we'd be traveling for the next two years and and take a lot of time off. Instead, we were stuck at home uh, with, with no business and nothing to do. So while we were locked at home we created outsource school we created a course on our unique hiring process um over the years we have this process we use for hiring we use it at ecom balance we use it at all of our companies that hires also ours um 99 of the time and so we started teaching that to other people and that that was great running a membership running a course does not take 40 hours a week and so we started consulting with other e-commerce sellers and the common theme was before we could consult with anyone, we would have to revamp their financials because we couldn't give them right. advice if we didn't actually know what was going on in their business. And right. so that while we're brainstorming different ideas on what to do next, because Connor and I love just starting businesses. We love the entrepreneur spirit and we had a lot of bad ideas thrown in there over the years. Um, we we, we kind of have the idea, hey, what if we just create a monthly bookkeeping service to, to solve this issue? And I mean, this is an issue we had with our Amazon business. The first few, year, few years, we either did the books or we just dumped everything on our accountant. And one of the best decisions we ever made with FreeUp was we hired a bookkeeper from day one to, to make sure our books were immaculate. When we sold the business, yeah. we had great books going back every month through day one. So that's yeah. kind of how the idea came about and, and how we got into the, the bookkeeping space and also why we launched Outsource School after we sold a freelance marketplace. 
you know, um, so we work, as you know, exclusively only with Amazon sellers. So our database is just Amazon sellers, our viewers, our viewers that sell on Amazon. A lot of them sell on other platforms as well, but we focus primarily on Amazon. And we've gotten a lot of, um, a lot of big aggregators coming to us like, Hey, do you know anybody, anyone who, you know, wants to exit all these things? If somebody wants to exit, how important are those books need to be, um, a mint to perfection, I guess. Um, for people to be to be able to leverage that as much as possible to be able to exit uh, the most profitable way possible. Yeah, so there's a few parts of that. I mean, first of all, we mentioned accrual versus cash. If you want, if you're an e-commerce business and you want the highest possible multiple, which I'm assuming you do, you have to have your books in accrual. There, there's no way around that. Second of all, is most people aren't going to buy your company if you don't have clean books and you're going to have to hire a bookkeeping service They're, the bookkeeping service is not going to do three years of books in two weeks they're going to need time to do it so you're going to be waiting so the time to clean up your books is not right before you so sell it's now getting it to a good spot so you have the opportunity to sell and lastly there's a trust factor when you come to selling a company i remember the the initial call that, that we had uh, with the people that bought free up and we were at a conference. We didn't have our, our laptop in front of us. My business partner and I were on a call with them. They were asking us questions about our business, our margins, the services we offer, our percentage of clients that make up sales, our, what our revenue projections were like. And, and we answered all those questions to the best of our ability, but we had had that monthly finance meeting every single month going back three and a half years at that point. So we knew our numbers very, very well. And down the line, when they did due diligence and they we opened up our books to them, everything yeah. we told them on that call matched exactly what was in our books. And that was a, a yeah. big part of them trusting us to go through with the sale. Now, yeah. I, I know a lot of entrepreneurs that buy businesses and I can't tell you how many times that initial phone call does not match what's in their books when they dig no. into it. And that will quickly blow up a sale. Yeah, at the end of the day, it's, you know, you're buying business, it's numbers. What are your numbers? Are your numbers positive, negative? Like that's, that's going to determine highly if you have a, a clean transaction and, and actually a good, you know, like you change your life, right? After you sold uh, that business, you just told us like it just set up, set you up for success. You, you had that financial freedom. And that's, I guess, you know, what 99%, I would leave that 1% out there. That, that's what they want, financial freedom and be able to, to live, live a, a you know, prosperous life. Quick question really quick before um we we, um, we start wrapping up um can we talk about you know you being such a successful entrepreneur how was your first time hiring a va like can you tell us about more like specifically amazon virtual assistants can you like walk us through a little bit like you know maybe there's a seller out there that's just started with his first listing and you know, he's doing really good maybe he's having like you know really good margins and he's like maybe i need somebody to help me with this walk us a little bit through there yeah. So, I mean, my first time hiring a VA, I had no idea what I was doing. I hired someone based on a referral. She ended up not working out, but my second hire, Chicky Ann, ended up being one of the best hires I ever made. We gave her a large bonus when we sold free up and that was a lot of luck. It, and after that, we made a lot of bad hires, which helped us develop a, a good hiring process. The, the way that I like to think of it is that there's three different levels of people you can hire, followers, doers, or experts. Followers are your virtual assistant. They might have years of experience in Amazon listing, customer service, whatever it is, but they're there to follow your system, your process. If you don't have a system or process, you can't just hire a VA and say, go find me profitable products. You need to have a good system to follow. The doers are the freelancers. There's a place for them. If you need a video editor, a graphic designer, an Amazon lister, you're not teaching them how to be a graphic designer, but they're not consulting with you either. They're there to do that one task at a high level and they do the same task over and over. And yeah. then you've got the experts, the agencies, coaches, consultants. You're not hiring them to teach them. You're hiring them for them to come in and bring their expertise and execute a game plan. So that's a that's how you that's how I think of it. And when you're hiring a VA and we teach us a lot at outsource school, we, we don't just look for skill. That's where a lot of people go wrong. We look for skill, attitude and communication. Me we too. want someone who can exactly. We want someone who can communicate at a high Love level. You, <laughs> we want someone <laughs> who can communicate at a high level. We want someone who has the right attitude that cares about stuff more than money because there's always going to be someone out there who can pay your VAs more than you can. So that can't be the only thing that they care about. And you want someone that obviously has the skill set that you need. And the second part of that is setting proper expectations. Before we hire anyone, we want to get on the same page. We don't want any surprises from them, from us on day one. 
everything from schedule to how you handle issues to how you communicate to what happens if you have an emergency all that stuff is established up front and yeah. that's black and white and cut and dry and if you do those two things alone you focus on skill attitude and communication and you set good expectations before they start you'll have a lot more success and you guys can check out outsource school if you want our exact playbook that you can just plug into your business definitely definitely i i think it's um what you said it like literally hits the the the, the nail on the head um hiring not just in skills but an aptitude not a, and, and not, uh, not not just aptitude but attitude as well attitude extremely important that that's literally what what makes it or breaks it for me because there's always going to be bumps along the way in your entrepreneurial life obviously and you need people that support you the, the, the tree's always going to be shaped and you know the bad apples are the ones that are going to fall out and the strong ones are going to stay um I, I completely agree with that. All of my team, I personally hire, I've worked with 15 right now. I personally hire based on, um, obviously skills matter, but there's a lot of things I can teach, they can learn outside, but the will to strive and grow, it's, it has to be there. For example, my girls um, right now, Petra and Elizabeth, Elizabeth is the background as well. Um, they did, I um, uh, paid them a course on how to optimize more for YouTube. And we started getting more traction, right? Um, that's just you need to have the will to be able to learn more and more um obviously if, if you know that's when you have a little bit of budget your time on budget either way you yeah. can go to outsource school um nathan you know basically gave you all his tricks and tips um he's you know he's way more successful than i am i i, I wish i, I could I, I hope someday i i, I you know get to that level as well as he's at right now so thank you so much nathan i really appreciate it do you want to add anything else no, thanks for having me. Um, people can follow me, Nathan Hirsch, on any social media channel. Um, you can also go to Outsource School or Econ Balance. If you use Econ Balance, you get two front, two months free of bookkeeping. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Oh, uh, I, we actually have a link. We're going to leave it in, in the comments. Um, obviously, guys, you know, like one hand washes the other. Um, if you guys want, you can use our link. If not, just go directly to their website and do it directly through them without using our referral link. If you use our referral link, better, obviously, for us. You'll be helping us out. I'm um, enough. No hard feelings. We still love you, though. All right, Nathan. Thank you so much, my friend. I really appreciate your time, brother. You're very busy, man. Thanks for having me on.